We've got nearly 700 species of birds in Australia. Uh, they, they form a background to our lives, whether we live in the city or in the country. They're, they're part of our experience, the noises, the sounds of birds. And birds in Australia are in serious trouble. I'm Harry Recker. I'm retired. I've got um, 57 years of experience as a field ecologist. Uh, 45 of those years here in Australia working on birds, mammals and insects. Mostly in forests and woodlands but also out in the Mulga country of Australia. I've seen a lot of the country. Australia's Australia is a lucky country, like everybody says. It's got a, a wealth of wildlife that uh, we all recognize and enjoy and experience, but there are problems. I think almost everybody's heard about the extinction of Australia's mammals. You know, Australia's had the highest extinction rate of its mammals of any continent on the planet. Uh, and, and that's something that bothers people. We worry about it. Uh, it. It disturbs us that things like we've lost the Tasmanian tiger, we, the Tasmanian devil is now in, in trouble. Uh, koalas are in trouble. But for 20 years, I've been talking about the loss of Australia's birds. Uh, you know, we've got nearly 700 species of birds in Australia. Uh, they, they form a background to our lives, whether we live in the city or in the country. They, they're part of our experience, the noises, the sounds of birds. And birds in Australia are in serious trouble. In my opinion, we probably have already lost half of the diversity of birds in Australia. We've only lost one species, but of all the other species, We've lost population after population, and large parts of the country are now, uh, birds are now absent, which were common in our parents' and our grandparents' lives. And we can, we can expect this to continue, uh, and, it, and it's going to mean a, a poor life for Australians. The birds that we're talking about are mainly birds associated with agricultural areas, the woodland birds in particular, and particularly in eastern Australia, <clears throat> these are the birds that have been most significantly reduced and, and it's a result of clearing for farming, uh, grazing pressure from domestic stock, changing, changing the vegetation and the habitats these birds require. Things like hooded robins, Jackie Winters, red cap robins, uh, the different thornbills, uh, apostle birds, uh, babblers, a whole range of species which once graced the, the rural landscape. But it's not just in the rural landscape that this problem is occurring. It's also happening in our cities. You know, increasingly, cities like Perth, Sydney, Brisbane, uh, the avifauna is becoming all the same. You know, it's, it's being dominated by big, bold, aggressive, nasty birds which love to live with people. And unfortunately, they, they exclude other species. Things like noisy miners in Brisbane, noisy miners in Sydney, uh, have uh, contributed to the, to the loss of blue wrens. You know, blue wrens were, when I came to Sydney, blue wrens were part of the landscape. It was the second bird, the second species of bird mm. that I saw when I stepped off the ship was a blue wren. A you, you're, you, you're, you have to struggle now to find a blue wren in the suburbs of Sydney. Well, if, if, we, if we look at the, the decline of birds across Australia, there's, there's a range of things that have happened, and, and I've mentioned some already. Uh, the most important, of course, is habitat clearing. We've cleared huge areas of Australia f to create farms, and we need to produce food. I'm not, no one's arguing about that. But you know, there's, in, in some places, like the wheat belt of Western Australia, 93% of the landscape has been cleared. Uh, overgrazing uh, worked out in the in the pastoral zones around Alice Springs, up in the Mulga country in the Gascoigne, and the damage that's done by cattle and sheep and goats, feral goats, uh, which of course now are being harvested uh, in lieu of sheep. You know these these animals do terrible damage to the landscape. You know, if you go up to the Gascoigne, you can construct a a scenario of change that's taken place. 
Uh, the area was colonized by pastoralists in the 1800s, 1860, 1880, thereabouts. They brought in sheep. The sheep ate up all the accumulated uh, plant material, uh, and the sheep numbers exploded. You know, it became a very lucrative industry. And then very quickly, as the sheep exhausted their food supply, it helped a little bit too by dry conditions, the sheep numbers crashed. Uh, now if you go up to the Gascoigne and the Merchantson, and western New South Wales is another place, uh, you won't see as many sheep, but you'll see a lot of goats. And what the goats are doing is they're climbing up into the acacia trees and eating them. Uh, and you see the scenario developing where the mulga trees are now dying. In other words, the, the goats are repeating what the sheep did. And you can jump to the future and you can see, if you shut your eyes, you can see North Africa. Large chunks of Western Australia are becoming like North Africa, a stony step. Yes, there'll be goats. Uh, there might even be some sheep and there'll also be camels, just like North Africa. There won't be much in the way of vegetation. There sure won't be any birds. So clearing, overgrazing are critical issues. In the urban environment along the coast, just the expansion of residential and urban development. So now we're seeing parks like Brisbane Waters, Karingai Chase, Royal National Park, all the coastal parks in New South Wales and Victoria and Queensland being burnt on a, on a frequent cycle to reduce fuel loads to protect adjoining properties. And the result is a loss of biodiversity, a loss of bird species. And the birds that were present in Brisbane Waters National Park during the winter time in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s and 80s are gone. Um, and I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 species of honey eaters, mm -hmm. which back in the mid 60s, I'd get my students to estimate how many were in the air above our head at one time, and we'd come up with numbers like 20, 25,000, 30,000 birds in the air at one time. You won't see that today. They're gone. That's a combination of clearing for agriculture, clearing their breeding grounds, but also altering their wintering and, and migratory routes along the coast through urban development, changed fire regimes. There's a lot of things going on which are really impacting on our birds, causing many, many species to decline in abundance. And eventually, they're going to go. They're gonna, we're going to lose them. And people, people can do a lot. One, one of the most important things, of course, is if you're concerned about these things, if you think birds are important, if you like having them around you, you know, tell your local member of parliament. You know, we, we just went through an election in this country where the environment wasn't even mentioned. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear any politicians talking about birds or endangered mammals or extinctions. Mm -hmm. It was like it wasn't happening. We need to make our politicians, our governments, aware of the importance of, this thing, of these things. So they support our national parks. So they support our conservation reserves. Support organizations uh, like Australian Wildlife uh, Conservancy, which is, is taking over and purchasing private lands for nature conservation. These are important actions. Contribute funds, give money. I mean, that's something, that's something very tangible that people can do. You know, for people that are studying birds, doing research, trying to protect them and save them, it's very hard to raise money to do research and find and find the, find the money to protect critical habitats. I, I do think the most important thing is, is become aware. Go outside and listen. That's the most important thing you can do right now. Go outside and listen. And if you can't hear a bird calling, start getting worried. There's not many birds calling. On into the field uh, here at Mount Gibson Station at the northern edge of the uh, West Australian wheat belt on the, what's known as the Mulga Eucalyptus Line. Mount Gibson is uh, a property belonging to the Australian Wildlife Conservancy, which is now dedicated to nature conservation. And the Conservancy has a very intensive program here and on its other properties 
of uh, studying native wildlife, rehabilitating habitats, and reintroducing species that have disappeared, particularly mammals. Uh, of course, I'm here watching the birds, and Australian birds are adapted to drought. They have to be. It's a dry continent. But when you look at climate change and all the predictions that it's going to get hotter and drier in Australia, and you know where where we are now in southwestern Western Australia, there's been a 20% reduction in rainfall over the past 30 years. That's a lot of. That's a. It's a big drop. That means not only less water, but more frequent, longer droughts. And as that intensifies, you know, a lot of these birds are going to find it really hard to survive. It means that the, the intervals between when they can breed successfully are going to get longer and longer and longer. That means each time a breeding, breeding opportunity comes along, rain, there'll be fewer individuals they'll get fewer young produced, the next drought hits, and you get that downward spiral. Just right where we're standing, we, did, we didn't pick the spot. The shrubs, right alongside of us, are dying from the drought. Now you're seeing the drought starting to pick off the major elements in the landscape, not just the birds, the vegetation. And compound that over the next 10, 50, 100 years, uh, you begin to see why I'm so concerned about the survival of Australian flora and fauna, and it's particularly why I'm concerned about its small birds. You know, it takes groups like the Wildlife Conservancy to really make a difference in, in helping these organisms by protecting lands, destocking them, allowing them to recover, protecting them from predators, eliminating cats, feral cats and foxes, that all helps, that all helps, but you know, we still have to do something for the bigger picture. We still have to do something about climate change because in the end, if we don't, we're going to lose all this stuff. And it's just too beautiful, too precious to lose. I'd really be devastated. I won't be here, but you will be.